Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University. School of Agriculture, SOA. Master of Science in Food Safety and Quality Management, MSc FSQM. Second year, MVP 005 Food Toxicology and Public Health. Block 2 Toxicants from Natural and Man-Made Sources and Contaminants. Unit 8 Veterinary Drugs Residues in Foods and Their Safety. 8.0 Objectives. After studying this unit, you will be able to Classify veterinary drugs. Narrate the mode of action of veterinary drugs. Explain the causes of veterinary drug residues in foods. Describe the problems associated with veterinary drug residues in foods and Identify the role of regulatory agencies for control of residues in foods. 8.1 Introduction In the previous units of this course, you have learned about various natural toxins of animal, plant, marine origin, heavy metal contaminants and pesticide residues in the food. So, you already know how the food with these toxins and residues can harm the consumers. Now, you will study about another important group of harmful residues, i.e., veterinary drug. Residues that might be present in the foods of animal origin. So, now the question is that why? These drugs are used in animals. You know that just like medical science for humans, veterinary science deals with the health and well-being of animals. These animals include not only pet and farm animals but also wild animals. Veterinary science is primarily concerned with care and treatment of diseased animals. In addition, it also deals with the productivity of animals i.e. foods and fiber. D. Food we obtain from animals includes milk, meat, and eggs. In India, common food animals are cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, pig and poultry. In order to protect the health and increase the productivity of food animals, several veterinary drugs are used. The drugs are given to animals in various ways which are called routes of administration. These include under the skin and deep into the muscles using an injection syringe or via oral. Route through feed etc. Whatever is the route, drugs once entered into the animal's body get distributed in various tissues and organs. There they bring out the desired effects such as healing of the injured cells, destruction of disease causing microorganism, relieving the pain from the disease etc. You are familiar with the concept of ADME, thus you know any drug after entering the body gets absorbed, distributed, metabolized and excreted. Veterinary drugs also follow the same ADME process in the animals and excreted out of animals' body through various routes such as urine, feces, sweat, milk and even through exhaled air. This excretion of drugs occurs in one of the two ways. In the first, the drug is excreted out as such i.e. as an original molecule. Alternatively, it may be excreted out in another form due to enzymatic action of various organs. These are called as metabolites of drugs. Some drugs are excreted out completely within very short period i.e. few hours but some drugs need few days to clear out of body. Whereas, in case of some drugs, minor quantity of drugs or their metabolites remain as such in various tissues and organs of the body. This small quantity that remains in the body of the animal is referred as the drug residues. The amount of drug residues in the body of the animal or the animal products depends upon its ADME property. The quantity of drug residues in the body can be calculated by knowing the half-life of that drug. Half-life is defined as the time it takes to become 50% of its original quantity. For example, if the half-life of a drug is 5 hours, it would take approximately 30 hours i.e. 6 half-life to get eliminated. Completely from the body, after 5 hours of consumption of 100% of drug, 50% remains after 5 HRS, 25% remains after second half life i.e. 10 HRS, 12.5% remains after third half life i.e. 15 HRS, 6.25% remains after fourth half life i.e. 20 HRS, and so on. When we consume foods of animal, origin obtained from animals administered with veterinary drugs, we also get exposed to small doses of these drugs or their metabolites in the form of residues. Now one may wonder, if the use of veterinary drugs in food animals is necessary then why? Their residual quantity in foods of animal origin is a food safety issue? If you also think so, then you are right. This unit will provide you to all the necessary information about veterinary drugs and concerns about their residues in foods of animal origin. 8.2 Veterinary Drugs in India, farm animals, especially dairy animals are important for supply of nutritious food. The animal industry significantly contributes to the economy of the country and also supports the livelihoods of many marginal farmers. However, this rural industry gets disrupted by outbreaks of diseases, 
animal diseases can significantly impact the social and financial structure of rural communities. Some animal diseases are economically important because they cause either death of a large proportion of the animal population or reduce the production of affected animals. Also, there are certain animal diseases that are transmitted to man and are therefore important from viewpoint of human health. Thus, it becomes necessary to protect the animal health using necessary veterinary drugs. In this section we will get acquainted with different types of veterinary drugs and their uses in maintenance of health and productivity of farm animals. 8.2.1 Classification of Veterinary Drugs In the context of food safety, the term veterinary drug is defined as any substance applied or administered to any food producing animal whether used for therapeutic, for treatment of disease, prophylactic, for prevention of disease, and or to alter the physiological functions. To increase productivity, the types of drugs used in the veterinary practice are discussed in the text followed. The examples of drugs included in such groups are summarized in Table 8.1. I. Antimicrobial drugs. An antimicrobial is a substance that kills or inhibits the growth of microorganisms and can be antibacterial, against bacteria, antifungal, against fungi, antiviral, against virus, antiprotozoal, against protozoa, etc. You must have heard about antibiotics which are also a type of antimicrobial drug. A. Antibiotics, earlier the term antibiotic was used to describe the formulations that were exclusively derived from the living organisms, fungi, bacteria, actinomycetes, but now it is also applied to synthetic antimicrobials as well. It is a type of antimicrobial that is able to kill or inhibit growth of bacteria. In livestock production, a wide variety of antibiotics such as beta-lactams, tetracyclines, aminoglycosides, macrolides, and polymyxins are used. B. Antifungal drugs. These are mostly available as drugs used on the surface of the skin to cure superficial fungal infections. Although rare, however sometimes antifungal agents are also used against systemic visceral infections. Some notable examples are natamycin, ketoconazole, IA traconazole, drisophilvan, amphotericin B, clotrimazole, etc. E. Antiparasitic drugs. These are the drugs that are used in the treatment and management of parasitic diseases which are caused by helminths, ectoparasites, protozoa, amoeba, etc. Dairy and meat. Animals get exposed to these parasites through feed, water, environment, managemental practices, etc. Based on types of parasites, there are specific drugs available for their treatment and control and are mentioned below. A. Anthelmintics. Invasion of the digestive system, rarely other system as well like respiratory system, by Internal parasites like nematodes and flukes is a very common affection of farm animals. These parasites cause distress and substantial economic loss. To get rid of these parasites, the administration of a wide variety of anthelmunctic drugs to farm animals is a routine. Management practice. B. Ectoparasiticides. Ectoparasiticides are commonly known as pesticide. Some chemicals from Organophosphates and synthetic pyrethroid group are used as veterinary drugs in suitable formulations against external parasites like fleas, mites, and lice that invade the skin of animals. C. Coccidiostats. Coccidiostats are antiprotozoal drugs used for the treatment and prevention of coccidiosis, a disease similar to the one caused by amoeba, disease in animals, particularly broiler poultry. Birds reared for meat purpose, e. Steroid hormones. Anabolic steroids are drugs that bring out the same effect in the body as that of natural steroid. Hormones such as testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. They increase protein synthesis within cells, which results in the buildup of cellular tissue, anabolism, especially in muscles. Therefore, when used in food animals, they act as growth promoters. The other group known as corticosteroids is a drug that mimics the actions of natural cortical hormone released by the adrenal glands. It is used in veterinary medicine for its anti-inflammatory effects as well. IV non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, usually abbreviated to NSAIDs, are drugs with analgesic, reducing pain, and antipyretic, fever-reducing, effects and which have in higher doses, anti-inflammatory effects, reducing inflammation. The term non-steroidal is used to Distinguish these drugs from steroids, which, among a broad range of other effects, have a similar anti-inflammatory action, versus beta-agonists. Beta-agonists are synthetically produced compounds, which are used regularly in the veterinary medicine to treat pulmonary diseases. In addition, these drugs have the ability to 
promote weight gain in food producing animals. They are also called as repartitioning agents. Because of their ability to exert a desirable effect on carcass composition by increasing the deposition of protein while reducing fat accumulation. Table 8.1 Examples of Veterinary Drugs Used in Food Animals Look at the screen. 8.2.2 Mode of Action Veterinary drugs can be given to animals through various routes of administration as explained earlier in the introduction section of this chapter. However, in the case of food, animals due to their large population at farm, the most convenient way of administration of drugs is through feed. Drugs are given to farm animals at various concentrations, dose, depending upon the required effect in animals. Therapeutic dose of drugs usually ranges. Between 200 to 1000 grams of drug per ton of feed is used for disease treatment. At such high concentration, the disease-causing organisms are killed and the animal gets cured of the disease. Less than this is a prophylactic dose, 100 to 400 grams, ton of feed, which is used for the prevention of infectious diseases caused by microorganisms. At this concentration, the disease is prevented by killing the disease-causing organisms immediately after their entry in the body. Lastly, the subtherapeutic dose of less than 200 grams, ton of feed is used to increase feed efficiency, to get more milk and meat production with less feed, and growth promotion. The mechanism of action to bring out the desired effect at a subtherapeutic dose is not completely understood. However, some scientists are of the opinion that this is due to nutrient sparing and metabolic effect. Antimicrobial drugs reduce the number of normal bacteria in the stomach and intestine of animals which consume a significant portion of feed consumed by animals. This leads to an Increase in the availability of nutrients for animals. Some antimicrobial drugs cause the thinning of the intestinal wall of animals. This leads to increased absorption of vital nutrients, like vitamins and minerals. Thus, because of increased availability of nutrients followed by their increased absorption leads to enhanced growth in food animals. Such types of drugs are mainly used in animals reared for meat purposes. Some antimicrobials like tetracyclines at Subtherapeutic dose change the metabolic process of the body which affect the water and nitrogen excretion. Anthelmintics and ectoparasiticides kill the internal, worms, and external parasites of the animals, respectively. Anabolic steroids help in promoting growth of animals. NSAIDs act as anti-inflammatory, analgesic and antipyretic agents. Beta agonist drugs also promote growth of animal in addition to treating pulmonary diseases. 8.3 Causes of Veterinary Drug Residues in Food Veterinary drugs when used in a proper scientific manner, then their presence in the food is very unlikely, and even if drug residues appear in the food, their concentration will be very low to cause any adverse effect. So, let us see the causes of the occurrence of these residues in foods of animal origin at an unacceptable level. The major reason for the presence of drug residues at unacceptable concentrations is the failure to observe the withdrawal period. The withdrawal period is defined as the time between the last administration of a drug to the animal and the time of collection, production, of animal products like milk, meat, egg from such drug-treated animals, which if followed diligently, can give assurance that the concentration of residues in food shall remain within the acceptable limits. This acceptable limit is referred as the maximum residue limit, MRL. More detailed information about the concept of MRL is given in the section 8. 5.2 when the quantity of drug residues in food is found to be more than its MRL value then such quantity is described as the violative concentration. The violative concentration of drug residues is observed when livestock farmers do not maintain treatment records and send the food products obtained from such drug-treated animals to market during the withdrawal period. Dry cow therapy is also a reason for presence of residues of antibiotics, mainly penicillin. Group of antibiotics in milk. This therapy is given to pregnant cows in advanced stages, which have stopped giving milk, dry cow, to prevent the occurrence of mastitis, abnormal, inflammatory condition of udder. This therapy involves administration of antibiotic drugs through teat canal to prevent the entry of the microorganisms through it and cause infection of udder. These cows once give birth to calves and resume milking, at that time the milk contains very high quantity of antibiotic residues. Another reason for the excess quantity of drug residues is its off-label use. To understand the meaning of off-label use or extra-label use of drug, first you should know how the use of drug in animals is controlled by concerned drug regulatory authorities in the country. In 
India, the Central Drug Standard Control Organization, CDSCO, controls the use of veterinary drugs. The use of drug is approved with certain conditions based on the results obtained from extensive research activities followed by clinical trials. These conditions are mentioned in the form of instructions on the label of the drug container such as the route of administration, species of the animal, dosage and indication, certain diseases or abnormal conditions. When these instructions are not followed while administering the drug to the animal then it is called as off-label use. For example, the use of drug in animal species not listed in the labeling, use a dosage higher than the recommended quantity, frequencies or using different routes of administration other than those stated in the labeling ETC. Since, withdrawal time is established under fixed situations similar to the approved use of drug. D. Off-label use usually leads to the occurrence of residue with violative concentration even though withdrawal period is observed. Animal feeds may get contamination with a variety of compounds and thereby serves as an important source of unintended application of veterinary drugs to farm animals. For example, if the animal feed gets contaminated with feed medicated with coccidiostats can lead to its residue in broiler chicken. The residues of veterinary drugs can be transferred from the mother to its offspring. For example, calves may get antibiotic residues of penicillin G or amoxicillin by consuming the contaminated milk of its mother. The residues of levamisole can be detected in eggs laid by hen which is given feed containing levamisole residues. Some banned veterinary drugs are illegally used in farm animals to increase production. Repeated injections of oxytocin injection to increase milk production serves good example of such abuse. Sometimes illegal use of unapproved veterinary drugs, while use was approved earlier, may also create challenge for other animals like use of diclofenac create challenge to vultures. This is explained in further details in latter part of this chapter. 8.4 Concerns of Veterinary Drug Residues in Food Drug residues in meat, milk and eggs, resulted from their use in food animals, lead to undesirable effect on not only human health but also environmental health. Further, these Residues are responsible for technological problems, particularly in the dairy industry. We will discuss each of them in subsequent sections. 8.4.1 Adverse Effect on Human Health The adverse effects of various veterinary drug residues on human health are discussed below. 8.4.1.1 Adverse Effects of Antimicrobials You know that the antimicrobial drugs are primarily used in animals for killing or inhibiting the disease-causing microbes but they can have following bad effects on human health if they are present at unacceptable level in food. A. Effects on human gut microbiota. The microbiota in the human gastrointestinal tract, normal residential microorganisms, is responsible for maintaining a very diverse and well-established ecological community. This community contains more than 400 different bacterial species. Their presence is an example of a symbiotic relationship. Together this, microbial community provides the natural defense by preventing the invasion of pathogenic bacteria and also by limiting the overgrowth of opportunistic microorganisms. Consumption of antimicrobial agents causes disturbances in these functions by killing the useful microorganisms. This exposure is unavoidable when happen as a treatment protocol for few days to cure the disease. But unintended exposure through consumption of contaminated food is a long-time exposure of low dose that leads to disturbances in gut microbiota. The extent of disturbance in the balance between host and microorganisms depends upon the properties of the antimicrobial agent and its quantity. b. Development of resistance by microorganisms, perhaps the most important concern about use of veterinary drugs in food animals is the ability of these residues to lead the emergence of drug resistance in human pathogenic bacteria. Because this drug resistance makes very difficult to control the infection caused by such pathogens. This phenomenon of emergence of resistance against the antimicrobial is known as antimicrobial resistance. AMRA, development of resistance in Ascherichia coli, an enteric pathogen, due to the use of tetracycline in animal feed in swine and poultry has been demonstrated in the USA. This finding is important because tetracycline is also used in human medicine for treatment of bacterial diseases. This development of resistance after repeated use of certain antibiotics in animal feeds is thought to be due to elimination of susceptible microbial population which allows proliferation of resistant population in the gut of animals. The statistical association between the presence of residues of antibiotics like tetracycline 
streptomycin, gentamicin, and chloramphenicol in animal products and resistant bacteria isolated from the same. Samples is well established. This indicates that the presence of low levels of antimicrobials can lead to selection and expression of resistance in bacteria associated with gastrointestinal tract. C. Hypersensitivity, allergic reactions, drug hypersensitivity reaction is defined as an immune-mediated response to a drug agent in a sensitized patient which is characterized by release of very high quantity of certain antibodies known as immunoglobulin E. Hypersensitivity reactions may be as mild as the development of rashes to as worse as severe anaphylactic reactions that can cause death. Antimicrobial drug residues in animal products can cause hypersensitivity reactions in humans. As compared to other antimicrobials, beta-lactams have been reported to cause most of the hypersensitivity reactions in human beings. Aminoglycosides, sulfonamides and tetracyclines may also cause allergic reactions. However, these reactions were due to their medicinal use. The instances of hypersensitivity, reactions caused due to antimicrobial residues present in meat or milk are very few. D. Other minor health effects, aplastic anemia, a disease in which the body fails to produce blood cells in sufficient numbers, can occur in the susceptible individuals exposed to residual concentrations of chloramphenicol through consumption of meat obtained from chloramphenicol-treated animals. Aminoglycosides can produce damage in urinary system and disturb the vestibular and auditory functions. 8.4.1.2 Beta Adrenergic Agonists Certain beta agonists chemicals act as physiological analog of adrenaline. These are used in Veterinary medicine as bronchodilators, tocolytic, anti-contraction drug used to suppress premature labor, agents and also for growth promotion. At subtherapeutic dose these substances, in addition to their regular role, increase lean meat to fat ratio and improve feed conversion efficiency. Illegal use of these pharmacologically active substances has resulted in severe cases of food poisoning with adverse effects such as palpitation, tachycardia, agitation, tremors and headaches. The use of clenbuterol in cattle feed resulting into above-mentioned adverse reactions in the consumer was reported. 8.4.1.3 Residues of hormones, anabolic steroids and other drugs. Sex hormones naturally produced in the body influence the muscular development in animals, but do not remain present in meat. However, treatment of cattle with naturally occurring or synthetic sex hormones may enhance lean muscle growth and improve feed efficiency. Therefore, use of hormonal drugs has been used as a cost-effective procedure for enhancing meat production in some Western countries, including the United States of America and Canada. Steroid hormones are implicated in a range of cancers, including breast and cervical cancers in women, prostate and testicular neoplasia in men and other diseases such as polycystic ovary syndrome and malformations of the external and internal genitalia. Studies have shown that 17 beta estradiol, a growth hormone, is a probable carcinogen. This synthetic form of progesterone shares similar characteristics with a class of other molecules called endocrine disruptors, which imitate other human hormones in the body and have been linked to diseases such as cancer. Anabolic androgenic steroids are widely misused in human sports for enhanced muscle power and stamina. Although it cannot be considered as the case of food safety issue, they residues of such steroids in meat pose risk of failing a sports drug test by athletes who Consume it. Arsenical compounds are used in swine and poultry to promote growth and to prevent bacterial enteritis. The most commonly used arsenic compound for poultry is roxazone. Most of the roxazone is excreted unchanged but some metabolites have been detected in hen urine. Inorganic arsenic is a known carcinogen and may adversely affect the circulatory and nervous systems. 8.4.2 Technological Problems some antibiotics are resistant to severe heat treatments which are involved in food processing, such as pasteurization, drying, or freezing. The antibiotic residues in the fluid milk interfere with fermentation reactions by inhibiting the growth of starter culture bacteria. You know that fermentation reaction is very essential process in the production of certain milk products, such as curd, cheese, buttermilk, sour cream, or yogurt. Antimicrobial residues in fluid milk lead to production of inferior quality fermented products that can result into huge economic loss to the dairy industry. 8.4.3 Adverse Effects on Environmental Health Vultures are important creatures of the ecosystem. They feed upon dead carcasses of animals and act as a scavenger of the ecosystem. It is now realized that their population is on decline. 
To a great extent, this decline has been linked to the use of a painkiller, diclofenac in farm animals. This drug is very toxic to vultures. The drug is used as anti-inflammatory and pain killer. When animals under treatment succumb to death, their carcasses if disposed as such in the environment and when vultures feed upon such carcass of diclofenac treated animals, they get exposed to the toxic quantity of the drug leading to their death. Diclofenac is toxic to vultures even in small doses, causing kidney failure. That results in uric acid accumulating in the bird's blood and crystallizing around their internal organs, a condition called visceral gout. The sudden decline in the vulture population disturbs the food web of the ecosystem and leads to environmental problems. That's the reason in current days, diclofenac is banned for use in food animals like cattle, buffalo, etc. 8.5 Regulatory Aspects of Veterinary Drug Residues In food, so far you learned about veterinary drugs used in the animal industry and how they enter in to foods of animal origin as well as exert their harmful effects. To avoid problems associated with their presence in food, we have to take certain safety precautions. Usually, these are directed towards elimination of contaminated foods from entering into consumer markets. This is achieved by the establishment of regulatory framework which is responsible for setting the tolerance limits and monitoring its compliance in food products sold to consumers. Various national and international food standard organizations are involved in combating this food safety issue. In this section you will learn about these organizations and their role in the establishment of maximum residue limits in foods for drugs used in the veterinary practice. 8.5.1 Regulatory Agencies In India, there is Central Drug Standard Control Organization, CDSCO, which is a part of Directorate General of Health Services governed by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. CDSCO is the National Regulatory Authority, NRA, of India for drugs and cosmetics used in the human as well as veterinary medicine. As per the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, 1940, and Rules, 1945, which was amended in 2016, CDSCO is responsible for approval of drugs. Conduct of clinical trials, laying down the standards for drugs and control over the quality of imported drugs. Thus, CDSCO regulates the use of veterinary drugs in animals. But when these drugs appear in the form of residues in foods of animal origin, then it comes under the purview of Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, FSSAI. As you have studied about the Food Safety and Standards Act, Rules and Regulations in the COS MVP002, you know that FSSAI is an autonomous statutory authority set up under the Food Safety and Standards Act, 2006 for laying down standards for food items that are based on science. It also regulates the manufacture, storage, distribution, sale, and import of food items. The sole aim of this authority is to ensure the availability of safe and wholesome food. For human consumption, the FSSAI standards include specifications for ingredients, contaminants, residues of chemical contaminants including pesticide, heavy metals and veterinary drugs, biological hazards, etc. At the international level, the Codex Alimentarius Commission, CAC, acts as the regulatory body for international food standards. It is popularly referred as Codex. The commission was constituted in 1963 as a subsidiary body of the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, and the World Health Organization, WHO. Its objectives are protection of consumers in all countries and to ensure fair practices in international food trade. The Commission formulate the food safety standards which can be adopted by member countries as part of their existing national food legislation. However, the Codex standard does not have legal binding on the member countries. Despite this, the Codex standards have been found to be of great value in the international harmonization of food standards. This means most of the countries have adopted the Codex standards so there is uniformity of food legislation among member countries. Since 1989, the Codex Committee on Residues of Veterinary Drugs in Foods, CCRVDF, is actively engaged in the formulation of Codex standards for veterinary drugs. 8.5.2 Maximum Residue Limits as per the Encyclopedia of Food Safety, the term maximum residue limit, MRL, can be defined as the highest concentration of a contaminating drug or its metabolite resulting from the use of a veterinary medicinal product which may be legally permitted are recognized as acceptable in or on a food. The process of establishment of MRL of a veterinary drug in foods of animal origin is a lengthy process. It requires gathering of as much as information on the scientific evidence for 
Toxic properties of the drug. The first step towards establishment of MRL is determination of the acceptable daily intake, RD, value for the drug under consideration. RD of a drug is an estimate of the amount of a drug that can be ingested daily over a lifetime without appreciable health risks to the consumer. RD is also known as permissible daily exposure, PDE, in many countries like India, especially in pharmaceutical industry. It is calculated as a quantity of a drug per kilogram body weight on the basis of results obtained from the chronic toxicity studies in laboratory animals or sometime from actual clinical trials. From such studies, calculation is done for the concentration of the drug at which no adverse effect is observed. This concentration is referred as NOAELIE no observed adverse effect level. Since this value is obtained from animal studies and the fact that there might be variations among the people with respect to age, sex and race, there is a need to apply a safety factor to obtain the level that is harmless to humans. This factor is usually 1 100th which is obtained by the multiplication of factor for species difference, 1 10th, and the difference within individuals, 1 10th. The resultant value is the RD. The obtained RD is an acceptable daily intake expressed as concentration in milligram per kilogram body weight per day. When this concentration is multiplied by the average adult weight of man, usually 50 kilograms, the acceptable daily intake per person is obtained. There are other ways to calculate RD, PDE, although the principles remain the same. RD, PDE can be calculated as below. RD, mg per day, equals no ill, milligram per kilogram BW per day, X weight adjustment, 50 kilograms upon F1, X, F2, X, F3, X, F4, X, F5. Where different values can be as below. Factor. F1. Extrapolation between species. F2. Inter-individual variability. F3. Duration of exposure. F4. Severity of toxicity. F5. NOAEL. Noel versus LOAEL. LOL. LOAEL. LOEL stands for lowest observed adverse effect level. Lowest observed effect. Level. Consumers may get exposed to veterinary drugs from different sources. For example. The residues of drug can be found in meat and milk as well as products prepared from them. A. Person will consume varied quantities of meat, milk and their products. Therefore, possible dietary exposure of drug is also calculated on the basis of the average consumption of various products. Thus, MRL for residues of a particular veterinary drug in a specific food item is established. The examples of some of the veterinary drugs are given in Table 8.2. Table 8.2, examples of MRLs of veterinary drugs in foods of animal origin, milligram per kilogram, as per FSSAI. Look at the screen. 8.6 Summary, foods of animal origin constitute an important component of the human diet. Veterinary, drugs are used in food animals for the prevention and treatment of diseases as well as to increase production. When properly used, veterinary drugs are safe. However, there indiscriminate and off-label use can lead to the problem of residues in foods of animal origin. Not following the withdrawal period is the main reason for antimicrobial residues in milk. The veterinary drug residues in foods of animal origin can cause adverse health effect in human. Residues can also adversely affect the environment and also cause technological problems in dairy industry. Veterinary drug residues can be prevented by eliminating the contaminated foods from entering into market. This can be achieved by implementation of robust regulatory framework. Many countries have food regulatory authorities to serve this purpose. In India, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India develops the food standards and also carry out monitoring for their compliance. At international level, Codex Alimentary Committee established the food standards which are adopted by WHO member countries. 4. Control of veterinary drug residues in foods. Regulatory agencies have established maximum residue limits for certain drugs on the basis of their acceptable daily intake values. The safety of foods of animal origin caused by veterinary drug usage should be addressed at farm level itself by maintenance of proper health records, disease and treatment history and strictly monitoring the withdrawal time of all the veterinary drugs used in farm animals. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video with the next chapter.